Good morning children. It's Friday, last day of the working day of the week and we will be doing culture today. Okay. After culture you can go ahead doing your art and craft. Okay. Today's culture class we are going to be going back and uh, you know revising all that we have learned till today. Okay. Because you have to see what all we learned. No, there is a, po a possibility that you have forgotten completely. So on the first page we saw some insects, didn't we? We saw so many insects because our theme for this year, this term is wonders in the garden. One of the most uh, prominent things that you see in the garden other than the flowers will be the insect life there. So I told you there you might see insects like a centipede, you might find a snail, you might find grasshoppers or you might find uh, um, this is mantis, mantis, ants, bugs like ladybird, you might find fruit flies or any other flies like this, house flies and maybe sometimes frogs this is not an insect but you will find these in the garden and then you might even find a scorpion this is also not an insect okay or sometimes spider also this is also not an insect dragonfly okay so let's go one more time centipede snail Grasshopper, dragonfly, honeybees. See, honeybees have these black lines on it. Honeybees, flies like fruit flies, then ant, bugs like ladybird, mantis, frogs and scorpions and spiders. You will find them living along with the plants. Okay. They, why are they around along with the plants? They need to live. So they have to eat something. Correct. So their food comes from these plants or the soil in which they grow. So when they are, see for centipedes the uh, home is in their soil. So they will be inside a fertile soil, they will be going digging inside looking for tiny tiny creatures for it to eat from under the earth. Okay, they are not going to eat fruits and vegetables, they will be eating some tiny creatures from under the earth. Like that only these um, spiders or ants or bugs, they will all be eating some tiny creatures which are there in the garden. They will be really microscopic. Maybe we are not able to see with our eyes. But really tiny ones that they, they will eat upon. By eating those tiny microorganisms, they are actually helping the garden. Because these tiny things, they can be little by little, they will be eating off all the leaves or the flowers or the seeds. But before it is eaten or destroyed by these uh, microorganisms, the bugs and these insects will come and eat it up. Okay, so that way they are going to rescue the garden from any kind of attack. Okay, any kind of attack like uh, what you call that uh, uh, microorganism attack or a fungal attack. These, these insects will help. So you will find them abundantly in the uh, garden or in the farms and they are also some of them are called like earthworm is called the friend of the garden sorry friend of the farmer because the earthworm does a wonderful work you know what it do, does it like to live under the soil so it will go inside the soil digging and burrowing and digging and burrowing keeps moving so what happens when it is moving under the ground it makes channels of empty spaces through which air is supplied to the roots root is under the soil now root wants air and oxygen and all means it will get from under the soil now for that to happen these little creatures and all turn around in the soil and make little little spaces so they are very friendly okay some of the insects are friendly in the garden so insects are 
Sometimes they are very good in the garden. Sometimes they do create problems. Okay. So when they create problems, you call them pest. What do you call? Pest. When they are helpful, they are like you know any other insect. But when they are particularly creating problem for you, you call them pest. So whenever, uh, even with, that's why we use this word, stop pestering me. That is if you are troubling me or annoying me or disturbing me, we tell, you know, oh please stop pestering. Pestering means creating trouble. Okay. So anything which creates trouble for you, or I mean in the garden is called as a pest. At home also sometimes you have pest. Like for example, there will be ants or there will be spiders which are not supposed to be inside your house. Cockroaches. Is it okay to have them inside the house? How much ever you try, they do come inside and they disturb you. So you call such kind of creatures who come and disturb and, and annoy you or you know, they should not be inside the house for the hygiene part of the house. Such creatures which are not supposed to be there in the place is called as a pest. Okay, so some insects are pests, some insects are friends in the garden. Okay, now I will remove them. Grasshopper, mantis, ladybird, centipede. Centipede, you remember I told you it had, the name means 100 legs. But it actually doesn't have 100 legs. It may be one leg less or one leg more. Meaning it is always odd number. It will be either 101 or it will be 99. Odd number. Okay. So that is over. This is what we saw in the in first page. In the second page we saw two kinds of plants which are the flowering and non-flowering plants. Okay. In nature for we learnt about reproduction right one from one tree we expect the seed to come and that will that seed will grow up into another big tree okay so for that reproduction flower is very important so there are in the nature there are some plants which has flowers some plants do not have flowers so how do they grow, reproduce or how do they get another plant out of it? You need seed to come out, right? And for seed you need flower. But without flower, how are these plants able to reproduce? I'll show you one example. Here they have shown you fern and conifer. Examples for non-flowering. Ferns and conifers. I have drawn here for you the fern and conifers. Come. You see how the ferns... If you see, ferns are green bushy plants, okay. You will find them like leaves, you know, thick bushes of leaves you will find. All what you have to do is when you come across a fern, you have to take the help of your mummy or daddy one day to catch up with the fern. And if you gently lift and see the fern under the leaf, you just lift it and see it under the leaf, you will find dots like this. Okay, you'll find dots like this. These are called spores. Okay, that will be hidden under the leaf. You will not see it over the leaf. See how nature is trying to protect it from anybody attacking it or taking it. It is hiding and keeping it under the leaf. Okay, check out for these things. Under all the leaves it will have. Any leaf which is ready to reproduce will have it. On top you will never be able to see it. It will be under the leaf. Okay, very very interesting to see that. These are like the seeds but you don't call them seeds, you call them spores. Okay, and this will help, this will fly away. It will have light, it will be very very light like paper and very very tiny also. So they can fly and fall off somewhere and from there the fern will start growing. Okay, basically they fly and grow. Fly and fall in a place. In fruits, the seeds will come and eat, uh, I mean the birds will come and eat the fruits and then the seeds will be put here and there or the insects might help in moving the pollen. So that is a different kind. Here they will fly. So you call them wind pollination. Okay, you will come to know this a little later. But they depend on wind to carry this spores to a different place. Okay, so when the wind blows, all these spores will fly off to a different place. Okay, 
in conifers if you see there will be tiny tiny cones on it okay you will find tiny cones on it I am just drawing it here okay I will tell you how the cones will look I just brought two cones for you see these are cones Initially the cone will be closed like this. Can you see? You can come closer and take a look. They will be closed like this all close by. And one day they will bloom and they will open up. They are very woody. See that? Like wood. Okay. So they will be closed and one day they will open up like this. Can you see how they opened up? Here they are still closed. Now inside each of this petal like structure one spore will be hiding. Yeah, let's see if anything is hiding. Yeah, I can see one spore hiding here. Try if you can see it. Can you see it? One spore is hiding here. I can't take it out. Okay. So what happens this also again when the wind blows see there is one hiding inside this also. When the wind blows what will happen this spore will fly out because of the wind. I am not able to take it out because they are kind of stuck. It has been so many days. Okay. So this is spore. See I just pulled out one. See that? like that it will be stuck inside each of this woody thing and it will be closed and kept like this when they open up and they are dry and the wind blows these spores will fly and go fall in a different ground and from there a new conifer tree will grow okay conifers will be cone shaped that's why the name called conifer con cones cones conifers okay they will be cone shaped now you get it why we are learning about flowering and non-flowering? Yes. So cone shaped uh, flower will be there on it. But basically they are not flowers. Little woody. Okay. No absolutely woody. Actually I took it when I went to one place called uh, Uti. When I was just walking down the road this fellow just came and fell right on my head. And I was like who threw this on me? And I looked up lots of conifer, lots of such cones were lying. I just picked up few and I came. See it's useful today to explain it to you. I have lots of cones like this. Very beautiful day. You also can start collecting children. It will be very interesting. Look inside you will find the spores. Okay. So this is how they grow. Okay. Without flowers. So they are called non-flowering. Ferns and cones. Ferns and cone, uh, conifers. Then we have flowering plants which we saw so many. Flowering plants what all we did see? We saw sunflower, we saw hibiscus, we saw uh, rose and morning flower and morning glory and orchids. Okay. And there are so many others also you know. Dahlia, chrysanthemum, jasmine. So many flowers are there in the garden. Then we saw different kinds of plants going by the stem, the kind of stem that they have. Whether it is a thick woody stem or it is a thin woody stem or it is a slender stem or is it the stem which does need support like that. So going by the stem we classified them into tree, shrubs, vines thorny plants and herbs tree shrub wine thorny plant and herbs trees have very thick woody stem and they live a long life they grow up very tall shrub is little short but they also have woody stem but thinner not as thick as a tree thinner woody stem they are short plant they live for about some 5-6 years or 7 that's all trees and all live for very very long time shrub may be 2 years to 5 years that's all then they die then vines vines are those plants which need support to go because their stem is very weak they cannot stand straight 
so there are two types one which will go up taking support that is climbers then there is one which will creep on the floor and go that is creeper okay then we saw thorny plant thorny plants are fleshy stem green fleshy stem with lot of water inside and what is peculiar about them they do not have leaves at all instead of a leaf they have spines pricky spines okay that is a thorny plant and they grow mostly in the deserts then the last one what we saw are herbs herbs are very very tender plants they have very tender stem they don't grow very tall very short very very short they are okay the moment they start flowering they wither and die away but still we use them for their fragrance they have a, give out a very good uh, fragrance so some are used as medicines some are used as uh, vegetables like you know like uh, um your uh, coriander mint some are just grass and some are like crops like paddy rice plant wheat okay these are the kinds of plants then we saw about life cycle of a butterfly right it starts with a egg and then the egg grows up into a caterpillar the caterpillar turns into a pupa it covers itself inside a pupa and sits there for a very long time and after few weeks the pu out of the pupa will come one butterfly a very 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 colorful butterfly and the butterfly will again lay an egg it just goes on like this in all these things these butterflies live only for some two weeks that's all after that they die before they die they will lay eggs and go okay many eggs then this goes on like this egg caterpillar pupa butterfly that we learned on this material this jigsaw puzzle we learned egg caterpillar pupa butterfly emerging out of a pupa and then the butterfly then this goes on and on and on okay next one is uh next one what we saw was ah uh, our favorite the things that you find in the garden what are the things that you find in the garden or the tools that we use for gardening you use a shovel i showed you there are so many types of shovel a small shovel a big shovel and our indian shovel then we have the fork gardening fork or you call it rake also gardening fork then a pair of gloves okay then you have a pot for planting and then you need watering can if not watering can you will be using a garden hose a pipe a garden hose for watering so these are the things that you will uh, tools that you will use in the garden for gardening then we saw life cycle of a plant like the life cycle of a butterfly we have a life cycle of a plant which it starts from the seed starts from the seed then it will give out true leaves and then it becomes a young plant out of the young plant comes a shrub or the tiny plant which gives out flowers and the flowers will one day become fruit uh, vegetable and the vegetable will become a fruit and inside the fruits again you will find lots of what seeds okay so this goes on this also we saw in a jigsaw puzzle seed the shoot coming shoot root and true leaves coming out of the seed the seed coat is also tearing and coming off in this you see the true leaves coming out and the shoot coming out of the earth and then it gives out a young plant the young plant becomes a tree and on the tree you will find flowers which become vegetables and then which become a fruit and the fruit will have so many seeds which will again fall into the ground and grow up okay go back to the video where you have the content okay so that is what you saw in the in that page 
and today's homework will be quite simple where you have to find out on page number 10 this is what we are going to be learning today okay are you ready today we are going to learn page number 10 mm. we are going to find out who are all the destroyers in the garden okay destroyers or the pests or people who are not too friendly in a garden look here first picture is that of a squirrel okay the squirrel what does it do it has a diet of eating nuts sometimes it even eat buds and flowers in the garden so can we have a squirrel in the garden they don't really uh, disturb us or uh, they're kind of entertaining for us but the problem is they can eat up the woody parts of the tree because if they get lots of nuts they want to store and keep it so they kind of uh, make holes in the trees okay so kind of not a great helper in the garden they really don't help in the garden because they only come to the garden for eating they eat up the nuts or the buds or the flowers and if they want to store the nuts and all, they will make holes in the trees and all. So they are not a uh, friendly animal. So you have to circle the destroyers, means kindly circle the squirrel. Okay, they don't really help. Next one is that of a woodcutter. You see a destroyer in the garden? Yes, definitely he destroys. So, you have to circle the destroyer in the garden. Next one is the earthworm. Earthworm, I already told you what. They go under the soil and they will burrow and make spaces under the earth. So that the roots can breathe. They also can get oxygen. So, they help. So, leave it. They are good. They are good friends in the garden. How about children who are helpful in the garden? Obviously, they are very helpful in the garden. How about birds? Birds are very good. They help in carrying the seeds. Carrying the seeds from one place to another place. So, they are also good. They are good helpers. How about thrash? Thrash. Thrash is uh, not going to help the garden, right? They are not good in the garden. They have to be out of the garden. Okay? Because they will be simply attracting flies and all those things. Next one is a goat in the garden. What does a goat do in the garden? It eats up the leaves, no? Is it good? No, they are destroyers. They destroy the garden. So you have to circle them. They are not good. We don't want them. Thumbs down. Then how about watering? People watering in the garden. Do they help? Yes, they are very, very helpful. People nurturing the garden and people watering the garden are very good helpers in the garden. And what about bugs? Bugs are good. They are not good for you but for the plants they are very good. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. What all are the destroyers in the garden? The squirrel, the woodcutter, then the thrash, the goat are the destroyers in the garden okay the squirrel the woodcutter thrash goat these are the destroyers others are all the friends in the garden okay bugs are very important they eat up unwanted uh, microorganisms and they save the plants from getting any kind of fungal infection or growth there okay so few of them are good few of them are bad you will have to circle them Next, you will have to turn to page number 15. Very easy. You have to simply color them. Okay. This is just a garden and you have to color this gardening uh, picture of a garden where a man is planting a small plant into the gar garden bed here. He has prepared a bed here for gardening and then he has got a shovel here. Can you see that? That is a small shovel. There is also a big shovel propped up there. And look at this lady. She is carrying a gardening hose also. You see that? And there is a bird flying around which is going to help the garden. 
okay so you're going to color this as beautiful as possible when i'm going to get your books back i want to see who's done a very beautiful coloring so yes children do your work this is a long video thank you for sitting these are the work, uh, sheets that you have to do page number 15 and 10 okay okay see you all children again in another video until then it's bye